Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this raindrops effect inside of Nuke. Please keep in mind that this will not be an in-depth tutorial, but an overview of the most important aspects of this visual effect. Now it's not very difficult to create the illusion of rain with Nuke's particle system by making a lot of small white particles move down the y-axis and adding some motion blur to them. But to make it even easier for Nuke users, we have a new snow and rain particle toolset inside of Nuke that you can find in the toolsets menu under 3D, particles, p underscore snow rain. I also use this toolset in this shot to add a bit of rain to the background. The tricky part about this example is to create the raindrops on the window. In this shot, it is a combination of a 3D and 2D effect. The raindrops on the window get generated by Nuke's 3D particle system, and then they get displaced in 2D to give them a realistic look and movement. Since these two operations are the essence of this effect, I want to focus on one of the 3D particle systems that generates some of the raindrops, and the 2D displacement of these raindrops that makes this effect believable. So let's take a closer look at one of the three particle systems that make up the raindrops on the window, because the other two are just a variation of a similar setup. If we take a look at the scene node and hit the play button, we can see the animation of these raindrop streaks that make up the biggest part of this effect. Now let's take a detailed look at how the combination of these nodes creates this animation. It all starts with a card as the emitter and a particle emitter node that uses this 40 by 40 image of a white dot as a particle shape. After that, a particle gravity node pulls the particles down, which gets slowed down by this particle drag node. Then this turbulence node creates some randomness to the strength and scale of these particles. And the particle spawn node underneath it emits more particles from the ones that already exist, which creates these long streaks that are essential for this effect. To finish it off, the particle settings node increases the particle simulation steps of this animation, which makes the streaks look thicker and connected. And finally, the particle curve node makes the streaks thinner at the top by modifying this curve where it says size, which already makes these particles look a bit more like raindrop streaks. If you want to, you can download this whole project by clicking on the link in the description of this video. That way you can take a closer look at the settings of these particle nodes and see how you can use them in your own productions. This is what the particle animation looks like in 2D, which again is the first part of the two important components that create this effect. The second part is a very simple but powerful 2D effect, which is the distortion of this particle animation with the help of this combined noise pattern and the PXF Distort Gizmo. You can get this gizmo on Wikipedia by going to this URL or by downloading this project. The reason why I use the PXF Distort node instead of the regular iDistort node is because it gave me the best result from all the distortion tools that I have tried out for this effect. The good thing is that the PXF Distort node is just a bit more complex version of Nuke's iDistort node because it uses the iDistort node under the hood. As the name suggests, this node distorts your image, and it does that with the help of an alpha channel that you need to plug into your lens input. Now, if I turn this distortion off and on, you can clearly see that it instantly makes our particle animation look a lot more like real raindrops on a window. So let me summarize what exactly happens in this particles backdrop. We have three particle systems. These three particle systems get distorted with the PXF distort node and some noise patterns. And then the result of these distorted particle animations gets combined to create this animation of raindrops. This animation gets used for two things inside of this next backdrop. First of all, as the name suggests, it gets used to displace the background image with the help of another PXF distort node to give the illusion of light being refracted by water. And second of all, this particle animation gets used as an alpha channel to mask out what comes out of the PXF distort node. 
so that the displacement of the background only happens within the alpha mask of our particle animation. So to achieve this effect, you need a particle animation that should look like raindrops. Then you use the alpha channel of this animation to distort your background image and to stencil out your distorted background image. After the creation of these raindrops, I combined them with the foreground image of this window frame, a defocus effect of the fore and background, a particle animation of raindrops in the background, a 2D scale and position animation, and finally, some lens effects like lens distortion, grain, and a color correction. This is what the final animation looks like. And again, you can download this whole project by clicking on the link in the description of this video. This is Lars Vemir. Thanks for watching, and goodbye, everybody.